Welcome back to The Standard Podcast. We pray this episode encourages you to dive deeper into the Word of God to discover all of His promises for you. Did you start already? So, okay. <laughs> this week's verse was Proverbs thirteen eighteen. He who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. And... I love this verse because I feel like the correction, accountability is something that's lost within the church as a whole nowadays. Um, Proverbs 13, 18. I just lost it. Um, But it is important to surround yourself with people who are willing to correct you and hold you accountable Um, because if we don't have that, then it's very, very easy to get off the path especially in the world we live in it's so easy to be led astray yes and also having a teachable spirit our pastor has taught on that before Mm -hmm. um if you don't have a teachable spirit it can lead to destruction which is poverty and disgrace that can be under the umbrella Mm -hmm. of destruction i think yep but i feel also feel like if you can't if you don't have if you're not able to have instruction, whether it's from your pastor or someone that's over you, then are you ever going to grow? Because you're not learning, essentially. Right. You know? Especially from someone who has years of wisdom beyond what you have. Well, if you have no one to correct you, then you basically are living a lie. Like you're living a delusion. In your mm-hmm. own delusion. In Delulu land. You know? <laughs> The Lulu land party of one because there's nobody that's there's no like way that somebody can tell you right from wrong if you think that you're right all the time. Yeah. So when you think you're right all the time, you think your way is the best way, you think that everybody's got something against you, well that's just gonna lead to loneliness, so it's gonna lead to It just comes down to it's pride. Yeah. Being yeah. prideful. Yeah. And which leads for destru- leads to destruction. Yeah, it's a deadly sin for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I and mean, then it's the, the other part says, but one, mine says one who complies with rebuke. I mean, it's one who, like, takes the criticism and accepts it and then learns from it also. Like, not just taking it. Like, you can take criticism all day long and have no change. Right. But it's about you taking it and correcting this, what it is and then being turning it around to make it better. That is just as important. Yeah. Good. It is good. Yes. It's a reminder to like I know most of our or a lot of our um, verses of the week have been an encouragement, mm-hmm. but it is also a reminder that the Bible is our ultimate corrector. You know yeah. that it gives us instruction and wisdom about how we're supposed to live our lives too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. So. <laughs> Today, we're learning about Deborah. We only got two women left. Well, two more women left in the speech series. Yeah. Deborah, and then we're ending with Mary. So, this is... Is it just two? Yeah, just I two. I thought it was three. Oh, is it? I don't know. Who was the other one? I can't. I don't have a calendar. Let's see. There might be two. Well, this this Monday, and then... Yeah. Monday. So, we still have two more. After Deborah. Okay. There was somebody. I can't remember who it is right now. Anyways, I mean, we could pick one. Today's Deborah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Today is Deborah. And to set up the story of Deborah, the Israelites had just come out of captivity from the Egyptians. So they were going to the promised land. And this was after Joshua, his time. But the Israelites, the reason why they needed judges, because that's what Deborah was was because they failed to drive out the inhabitants of the Canaan land to begin with. And I loved, I love my Bible because it has all the extra stuff on it, um, or in it, the added notes and stuff, because I wrote down this that was in it. It says, complete removal of evil often means disaster in the end. We must beware of compromising with wickedness. And that's what the Israelites were doing at the time. They failed to drive out the inhabitants of the land so they were coexisting with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And that led to them worshipping other gods 
other idols, which was, I mean, it was a sin. And God, when he promised them the land, they, he told them, you are to drive out all of the inhabitants of the land. Not just some of them, yeah. but all of them. And they failed to do that, which is why he appointed judges. Because the people around them were trying to conquer them. They oppressed the Israelite people. So Deborah was one of the judges. She was the second. She was also the only female judge. So that's pretty cool. But um, the oppressor at the time of Deborah was Sisera. And people feared him so much because his army consisted of 900 iron chariots. Yeah. And those were in undefeatable then compared to a foot soldier. Or a wooden chariot, even. Yeah. They were indestructible, just about. And they were oppressed. This says they were oppressed for 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> oh, gosh. But Deborah was a prophetess, so the Lord sent her to tell Barak whoever he is. <laughs> I don't really know if he's a, like a general in the army or it doesn't say, it doesn't right. say that he was, but she told him to go and call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun. And I will call out Sisera commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kishon river there I will give you victory over him. So Barak did what she said, but he asked her, he said, I'll do it, but will you go with me? Mm -hmm. And Deborah said, sure, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. And I love this story about Deborah because she listened to the Lord, and my Bible says... She reminds us of the need to be available both to God and to others. She reminds us that God could choose to use us in ways that are unexpected. She encourages us to spend our efforts on what we do, what we can do, rather on worrying about what we can't do. And she challenges us to be wise leaders and to call others into action, like she did with Barak. So why do you think that? So I'm just curious, like what y'all think. So the fact that. Because Beric said, my mind says, if you go, will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So then she said, with, after that, I will certainly go with you. However, the fame shall not be yours on the journey. For the Lord will set, sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Like, why do you think, because of Beric's response, why did the, God let a woman be the one to destroy? Well, I think because it was to prove a point. Beric was willing to go under circumstances. Deborah was willing to be a prophetess and to tell Beric that he would have the victory, period. So you would say that a woman a lot of times can be more, like, more willing, like without a, basically like without a reprove, like a, not a reprove, but what's the word? A circumstance. A, like a circumstance or like a I'll do this if whatever that an is. ultimatum yeah like God was like well you have an ultimatum since you want to try to work that and make that part of your flesh because you're nervous I mean I'm sure he was nervous considering yeah. they were oppressed mm -hmm. and he was scary and so he didn't have a full trust in the Lord so then was it like God was like okay well since you don't trust me then you're not going to get the glory for the like you're not going to get the honor for this and I'll do it from a woman who's in a way like a servant who has a servant's heart, especially in that time. I mean, that's what I was just thinking of. Like, a woman is is willing to do what it needs to be done for her family or for her people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that with many of the women that we've talked about already. Yeah, I think it was a big deal that the fact that a woman did it, especially back in that time, mm -hmm. because they were just like you said, they served, they did what they told, they they were told, and then nothing else. They didn't really. Like right. any honor at all. Yeah. yeah, we talked about that with Hannah because yeah. during in her culture and during that time, that's what they were supposed to do with her yeah. kids. So the, the fact husbands. that a woman is the one, that was a huge deal. So I think, yeah, to answer your question, I think that was because of his, not necessarily disobedience, but 
just like his, a his compromised obedience. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But I love that. And then after, um, they went into battle. Of course, the Israelites overcame the army of Sisera, but Sisera fled to a nearby tent. Yeah, Heber. Heber, yes. And his wife, while he was sleeping, killed him with a tent peg into his temple. (laughs) Because she was being obedient. Whether she knew it or not. And maybe she heard the Lord tell her that's what she had to do. J.L. was her name. Yeah. And. Oh, J.L., yeah. When she went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Don't be afraid. So he went into her tent and she covered him with a blanket. Please give me some water, he said. I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anybody comes and asks you if there is anyone here, say no. But when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael quietly crept up to him with a hammer and a tent peg in her hand. Then she drove the tent peg through his temple and into the ground and so he died so when Barak came looking for Sisera he found him in the tent of jail and um, he found him dead obviously that's crazy yeah (laughs) it really is I mean like the fact first of all I think about this all the time like to be able to stab somebody or whatever like you have to be really strong to do that so she had like a will and a purpose, which I believe if the Lord said that a woman was going to kill her, he would give her the supernatural strength Yeah, to do that. But also, like, what I was talking about earlier, like, you have Heather or Heber or however you say his name, who just wanted to remain neutral. Like, this is another passive man who didn't want to have full obedience in the Lord, that he wanted to take, have a, have some type of common ground that would make him safe either way, because he didn't have a full trust in the Lord. He had a lack of faith. He had a lack of faith because he was friends with Jabal, the king of the of whatever sister's people were, and then, um, but he was a uh, he was a Israelite like they were Israelites, but they wanted to remain neutral because of his lack of faith in the Lord. Also, mm-hmm. so but we have his wife here who who like is the same as Deborah in this instance of she's going to do what needs to be done, she's going to take action. For protection from her family, protection for her people, everything, just by doing that instant, in that instant. Mm-hmm. I mean, something that's something really think about. It says a lot about women in general, how the role of a woman when it comes to family, because it kind of reminds me of my mom, the way that I saw her protect her family, whether it be physically or especially in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Um, because when you think of protection, you I normally would think of like the male figure but listen some women they be crazy <laughs> yeah. for their kids and for their family yeah and I'm sure she was probably frustrated because mm-hmm. you know a woman's supposed to be the helper a helper of the man and yeah, yeah they make the, deci- the spiritual decisions and stuff but she's also like the helper of that to help decide so I'm sure she had some frustration um to like why are you not choosing the right side like yeah. you, you not choosing is choosing the wrong side apparently like here yeah. i'll just do it for us. yeah so she, she just took those matters into well in the lord's hands but also in her hands she probably didn't, didn't even realize that she was going to be i mean nobody spoke that prophecy out loud except for the one person I knew about was barrick and deborah <coughs> yeah so it just says a lot about how important your faith is and how if god Gonna use somebody to get his will done. He's gonna use whoever's willing and available. Deborah was willing. She mm-hmm. dropped everything. She was a judge. She didn't have to go into those battles. But she had. She left her home. Yeah. That's what this does. It, she traveled from her home between Ramah and Bethel to march with Barak. Yeah. And the Israelite army against King Jabin and Sisera. Yeah. So she had a willingness to go. She didn't have no stipulations to go. She just said, all right, I'll do it. And then the Lord's going to get the glory for it, and this is what's going to happen. And so I think this really, both of these women, honestly, but, you know, we're talking about Deborah, like speaks to the, our willingness to obey. We mm-hmm. have to be willing. And mm-hmm. if the Lord says something, you need to do it. And 
You know, I'm not. We're not trying to bash a man, of course. But we see in this instance, these are two men that lack of faith. But that's where us as helpers come in yeah. to really help build them up and and be that rock that needs to be that be that protect, protector. Or if you do have a man in your life that's not what he's supposed to be spiritually, then you see that these women are even more important because you have to step up and be the one that God's called you to be in order to let His will come to fruition mm-hmm. in life. That makes sense. Yeah. So. It's good. It is good. Mm-hmm. I do love this story. It's short. It's Definitely. only two chapters. Yeah. Two chapters or one chapter? Two chapters. Two. Yeah. But a lot to learn from for sure. And yeah. then and then talk about what you talked about when you told me earlier about how in chapter five. Yeah. So it like most of the women that we have already studied on. Deborah was a worshiper. All of chapter 5 of Judges was her song, what she praised after the victory. And my um, notes down here said, In victory, Barak and Deborah sang praises to God, songs of praise, focus our attention on God, give us an outlet for spiritual celebration, and remind us of God's faithfulness and character. And this says, Whether you experience a victory, or a major dilemma, singing praises to God can have a positive effect on your attitude. And I just love how, like, most of the women that we've studied so far have been worshipers. Hannah, she had a song that she wrote. Mm -hmm. Deborah, she wrote a song after the victory over the, you know, Canaanite army. So I just love, I just love that. And just to worship in, no matter the circumstance, I think, that gives us, like I said, a positive attitude, but, you know, it reminds us of God's faithfulness and His character, even when we're in a dilemma. Yeah. We saw Hannah who was praising despite her situation, and then we see Deborah who praised even after her situation, but... Yeah, and we haven't got to Mary, but Mary, yeah. she did the same. Mm-hmm. She got a whole song in Luke. So. Miriam, she was a praiser. Yeah. So, I love that. The moral of the story is... Praise. Praise. <laughs> Praise. Praise. Yes. Okay, so, you got anything you want to add? Alrighty, so today I am doing the motivational scripture for the week. And it's actually two verses, but um, just because they fit together. But this is one of my favorites I've loved, I love since I was even young. Um, it's Micah 7, verses 7 and 8. I'll give you a chance to turn in your Bible to Micah 7, Verses 7 and 8. Turn with me. What <laughs> are you doing? Singing the Old Testament book songs. <laughs> so good. Micah 7. Yep. Micah chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. We've done this whole thing without that ring little. <gasps> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not taking full blame because nobody said anything. <laughs> I know, no clue. That's hilarious. At least all the lights are on. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. You're just going to start reading it because... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Micah chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. But as for me, I will be on the watch for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, enemy of mine. Though I fall, I will rise. Though I live in darkness, the Lord is a light for me. That's good. Say say it again. Seven and eight? Yeah, Micah 7, verses 7 and 8. Oh, verses 7. Okay. Start this segment over again. Okay. So today, I will be doing the motivational scripture for the week. Um, it's going to be Micah chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. But as for me, I will be on the watch for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, enemy of mine. Though I fall, I will rise. Though I live in darkness, the Lord is a light for me. Good, good, good. Okay. What were you on? <laughs> I was reading 8 and 9. Oh. Seven. Thanks for tuning in to The Standard. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Connect with us via our social medias to keep up with weekly scripture and upcoming news and videos.
If you have a prayer request or need some encouragement, don't hesitate to send us a message. We want to hear from you.